Hey there and welcome to my Photo Vibrance review. Now, Photo Vibrance is a beautiful photo application that allows you to create animated pictures uh, from still images. Now, let me show you a quick example so that you know what I'm talking about. This is an image that I took and I imported this in Photo Vibrance and I created this with the, with this single image. Look how this looked like. This is what you can do with a single image in Photo Vibrance. And this is just one of the things that you can do with Photo Vibrance. I'm going to show you a lot more examples. I think you will love it when you see this. So if this sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned. I'm going to show you everything in a second. Hey there, this is Tim Verdau and thank you so much for checking out my Photo Vibrance review. Now, like I said, this is an application that allows you to create beautiful animated images. I really enjoyed playing with this software. I already had early access to this a few months ago uh, when this was launched on the private list and they improved it even more like this, what you're seeing right now. It wasn't uh, ready back then and now they have added this to this application and you can create beautiful images with it. Now I want to say up front if you're interested in photo vibrance then make sure to click the link in the description uh, where you can get access to this app where you can get all the information uh, so make sure to check out that link and also if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments below. All right, so this is one example that I've just showed you. Uh, let me show you a few other examples so that you can see what you can do with Photo Vibrance. So uh, this was the tennis one. Uh, here we have another one. Let me see the sky replacement. So first we had this image and after we edited it, we have this image. Now this was not even the, the real clouds that you see in the background, the real sky, I'll replace the, the existing sky with this sky. And this is a still image uh, where you can do this. Now, let me show you a few more examples so that you can see what you can do. This is another sky replacement. So let me see if I can show you the original images. That will be uh, nice, of course. Um, let me see here where I can find those. I think that's this was the original picture. And as you can see, this was a different sky. So I replace the sky with this sky and look how this looks like. I think this looks pretty cool. And you can also change the speed of the sky. So when I put this on fast, it goes really fast or I can do this really slow. And this is a single image that you see uh, that I created this with. So this is another one. Let me uh, show you another one, the waterfall. This is also a nice one. Uh, let me play this. So this was also an image, a still image, and you create stuff like this. So it's really a moving waterfall right now. Uh, and also here, the fog at the bottom that you see, I've added that with Photo Vibrance. It wasn't on the original picture. And I've done some more. Let me open another one. So this is an eye. And my computer is a bit having a hard time rendering everything at the same time. But I hope you can see this. I'm also moving very slowly now, but you can see the eye. I hope my voice is still recorded, uh, but you can see how the eye is opening, uh, is moving, and you can create stuff like that with Photo Vibrance. Now, let me show you a new example. Let me load an example so that you can show you how this software works. So let me, let me see if this one, no. Um, I think the particles, I wanna show you this one. So when you import a photo, you have two options. First, you can choose to use the magic motion. And with magic motion, you can move elements. So if you have a waterfall, you can move that waterfall with the magic motion. The 3D parallax is what I showed you at the beginning, where you simply take a few elements out of a picture and you're gonna move these elements. And you can do that with parallax like you're seeing right here. In this case, we are going to work with magic motion. And this is the picture that we are importing. Now, when you import a picture, you can choose from a landscape to a square to a vertical, depending on which platform you wanna share these on, or you could do custom size where you can also go with the original size. Uh, but let's go for the landscape and let's click next. Now on this picture, you can do some extra uh, editing, like you can add a text. So let's say you wanna do 
50% off, stuff like this. Then you can change that in here, the line spacing, letters, etc. The, the color, uh, you can change the font in here, just whatever you prefer, and you can add that to your image. Now then you can also add other images, you can add shapes. So here are a lot of shapes in here. Uh, you can add images to this existing image. Uh, but what I like really is the effects that are in Photo Vibrance. As you can see here, there are a lot of effects in here that you can choose from that you can apply to your picture. Um, so what are we going to do? We're going to use the particles in here. I really like this one. And you can add this effect to your photo. As you can see, it's now added to my photo. Let me zoom out a bit so you can see it. And here you can see particles have been added to the photo. So when I play this now, you can see these particles playing everywhere on top of her. So this is not really nice. So what Photo Vibrance allows you to do is to draw mask on top of your picture. Now, when you draw a mask, you are telling Photo Vibrance uh, where the particles needs to be shown. So I'm going to do this really roughly, not really nice, uh, but it's just for you to, to get the ID uh, what this app is capable of. So let me quickly um, close this and also this one here, this side here. So each part that you're now <clears throat> going to draw is the part uh, that's going to have the particles on top of it. So let me make my brush a little bit bigger so that it goes quickly. And then this side as well. And I think this is a quick example that I can show you what you can do. So when I hit play now, look how this looks like. This looks really beautiful, right? 50% off. You can even do some pictures here at the left side. But this looks really beautiful. If you share this on social media, um, this looks really beautiful. And you can also change the particles. So if you go to the layers and you go to the particles in here, uh, you can change the opacity. You can change the speed to fast, slow, regular. Also the, the, the pencil size and the, and the edge file fading so that means the fading that it fades on top of the image so right now we see a little bit of fading on top of the image which makes it even more realis realistic uh, and this is how it works and with the layers here you can work on the layers so when i go to the text layer i can change this as you can see in color etc and once you're done you simply save this project and then you can also publish this now you can publish this in multiple ways you can create an mp4 file and you can tell photo vibrance how many loops you want to create in this video file or you can export this as a gif file an animated gif file that will loop and this is one of the examples that you can do now let me exit this one say yes exit let me open another uh, another image to so i can show you uh, how it works here you can browse here and you have different ways of importing images so you can also go here you have import image but you can also search in stock images so you can search on pixabay or on pexels so let's say you want to do the, the waterfall for example you simply search for waterfall and then you have these images now let's say we want to use this image um, and we want to use a magic motion again then again we can choose here what kind of picture we want to use so let's say we want to have this vertical or we want to have the original size in here we can do that and we're going to click next now this option allows you uh, to move elements inside of this picture now the first thing that you need to do is add some anchors uh, of the parts that you don't want to move so in this case we don't want to move this person in here so this person needs to stand still uh, when the water comes down right so we're gonna add these anchors on top of this person and again i'm going to do this really roughly it's not for a perfect end result but just to show you how this application works so let's say this is it and then also what we don't want to have is we don't want to have these elements moved in here so also we're going to add a few anchors in here and we're going to do a few anchors in here that we don't want to have this area moving otherwise it would not be realistic and then what you can do is you can add single arrows or a path of arrows where you can draw but we're going to do single arrows where you simply drag these arrows on top of your image and i'm not going to do too many uh, because like i said my computer is already having uh, problems rendering uh, this program together with my video recording at the same time uh, but let's 
just add a few in here so that you can see the result, uh, what this does and how this works. So let's finish this now and let's press play. Now you can see that this is a moving waterfall. This looks already great, right? And then what you can do here, what I did with another one, is when you go to effects in here, you can add these effects on top of it. So you can also do, uh, like I said, you can add fog to it. So this is a fog at the bottom, for example, uh, where you can add this, you can move this to the bottom in here, and that makes it even more realistic. When I press play now, look at this fog, how this also is at the bottom of this picture. This looks really, really cool. Uh, and this is what you can do with photo vibrance. And then another thing, so this is a quick example. Let me show you another quick example. Um, let me open another picture from my computer where I show you here the gas station, what I did to replace the sky is, again, we're going to use this magic motion. So this was the original picture and let's create the original picture to make it easy. What you can do in here is you can replace the sky in here by going to effects again. And when you go to skies here, you can place the sky on top. So let's say we're going to do a non-realistic uh, sky like this. Now this sky will be placed on top. When I click fit here and I move this on top here of this image, uh, you can see here, let's say we want to grab this. We want to move it a bit to the left. Let's go back to the layers here and then to the sky. And let's say we want to Somehow I need to always to click on select and then on the sky. Let's make this a little bit bigger and lower. So again, right now you need to draw a mask. Now I'm going to do this really roughly because otherwise it would take too much time. So I'm going to say the sky needs to be here. I'm going to leave that first gas station out. Also this top It's just to show you how easy this works. And of course, if you're going to do this yourself, you will be more precise. Uh, to what you're going to delete or whatnot. But I would just want to show you how easy it is to replace a sky. Um, and you can do this in any picture. So if you have a picture where there's no sky in the background, you can add a sky to it. So let's say this is it. Then you can hit play and look, now we have a sky on top, a totally different sky on top of this picture. And of course, this is not really nice here because I did um, not such a nice job, but you get the idea, right? And if you have done something wrong, you simply go to erase and then you erase a few parts in here. You're going to click play again and you can see how beautiful this works. So this is what you can do with this application. A lot of effects where you can choose from here. You can do all these, these bokeh on top of this image in here as an effect. Um, as you can see here, of course, on this image, this is not really nice. So let me remove this on the layer. Um, you have all these, these elements as well. So you can add these clouds, also a butterflies here. This is also very beautiful. When you create some, some um, elements of nature, you can add a butterfly like this that is, that is flying as well. And I've seen some tutorials where they did a really cool job with this butterfly. So this is another thing that you can do. And then let me open the last picture with the tennis, um, the first thing that I showed you uh, at the beginning, the first example. And now let's choose the 3D parallax. So how does this work? So let's say I'm going to use the custom. I'm going to use my custom size, the original size in here. How this works is, first of all, you're going to cut out your objects. So let's say I'm going to cut out this ball. Then I'm going to do stuff like this. I'm going to set all these dots in here where I'm going to cut out this ball and then at the end i'm going to close it let's say this is the only thing that i want to have then the next thing that you need to do here is um, when you go to next you're going to clone the background so when you click here when you select the background here you can start cloning now how this works is when you press the control button you can say i want to clone this part and i'm going to close this part in here so this is the sky here and this is not really nice. You need to take some time to, to do this more precisely. And you can also change the, the hardness. You can make this really soft. And then it will also be more beautiful, as you can see. If you take a little bit more time to, to do this, you can really make this nice that nobody will notice 
that the sky is, is changing in here. So, like I said, this, this takes some time to, to make this, this beautiful, uh, but you get the idea, right? Again, it's not about the result right now, how beautiful I create these images. It's just to show you uh, how this works. So let's say this is the end result. It looks like a cloud. Then I say stop cloning and you go to the next screen where you have some uh, animations and layers and frames where you can change these objects. So right now you can see this object. And when we play this, when we add a new keyframe in here, we can tell, okay, the second keyframe, for example, is where I want to zoom this in. And well, of course, we should have had more subjects or objects so you can see how it works. But do you see what I can do? I can tell right now with this keyframe, I want to have the ball in here. And I also want to move the ball. Let's say we, we, we want to have the ball in here, boom. And then when we're finished, the ball goes back. So let's say we want to use this. When we hit play, look how this looks like. So this is, boom, this was from this still image, right? And then you can also make this image go back again to the starting point. So you add a new keyframe. And then on the end, uh, we're going to zoom out again where the picture starts at the beginning. And this is a real a quick example, as you can see here, where we have this still picture and then it's going to go back, boom. Uh, and you can add text to it. Like I said before, you can add objects here. You can choose from, from objects from the list in here. Uh, you can add images, you can add text, like 50 or your first lesson. And then let me go to the next line here. Let me do it like this. Line spacing, another font in here and then line spacing a little bit less. So this is another layer right now. And as you can see here, this is the text layer. And when we go to the second keyframe in here, we can also say we want to have the text here. Um, we want to move the text and the object here. We want to have this out of view. And then the lesson, we want to have the lesson, for example, we want to have the lesson here where we move to your first lesson, something like this. And then something like this will happen, boom, and then it goes to your first lesson. And you can add all different kind of keyframes, uh, yeah, to switch to different areas in your picture. This is just a quick example to show you how this works. And this is in short, of course, you can do a lot more um, what Photo Vibrance is. And once you're done, you can click on publish again, and you can publish this to an MP4 file. And this is really high quality, um, yeah. And something I forgot to tell you also, you can rotate stuff and and things like that. There's so many things in here, uh, linear, power, there are different kind of effects that you can add to your images, etc. But I think you have seen enough to, uh, to judge if this is something that could uh, be useful for you. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool application. I'm really glad that I have purchased it myself. Um, so if you're interested, again, there's a link in the description below where you can purchase Photo Vibrance, where you can find all the information as well. And um, if you like these videos, then consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'll do more of these reviews of all different kinds of software products. Um, so yeah, subscribe and uh, don't forget to like the video if you uh, liked it. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below and uh, hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.